All right, here we have a 75 Newton weight suspended by two wires uh, as shown in this picture here. Um, find the forces F1, this vector F1, and F2 acting on both wires. Okay, so, uh, so we have some wires coming down here. We've got this 75 Newton force acting on this wire. Um, and then we've got the, we need to figure out what, what's the force on this wire um, holding it out this way at a 40 degree angle and what's the force on this wire holding it out here at a 55 degree angle. Um, the first thing we need to know about these, these uh, vectors is that these two vectors, F1 and F2, have to uh, add up. It, this, this is a vector here. This uh, 75 newtons is creating this vector coming down like this, straight down. Um, then these two vectors here... Um, if we added them together, so if we took this vector and added it onto, onto here, if we add these two together, um, or if we took this one and added it to this, these have to add up to a vector that is has equal magnitude to this one and... Uh, is going in the opposite direction. In other words, these two have to add up to a vector that is that is a force of 75 newtons straight up. Um, and so that's going to help us solve this because we know that vector F1 plus vector F2 has got to equal this vector. And we know what that vector is. Uh, the component form of that vector is just going to be uh, zero because it's not going anywhere in the horizontal direction. It's going straight up and 75. It's going, it has, it's magnitude is 75 in, in uh, all in the vertical direction. Okay, um, so that's going to, that's going to help us. The other thing that we need to know is, um, we need to come up with an equation for these, the, the component form of F1 and F2. And we can do that using a little bit of trigonometry here. We know that vector F1, the component form of that is going to be, well, it's coming out negative, right? So it's going to be negative. And then whatever the, the magnitude of F1 is, so this length here times uh, the cosine, because in the horizontal direction, in the x direction, it's always cosine. We remember that from trigonometry. The cosine of 55 degrees. This has got to be 55 degrees here if this is 55 degrees up there. So the cosine of 55 degrees. And then it's going up, uh, whatever the magnitude a vector f1 is times the sine of uh, 55 degrees. So that's the component form of this vector. Now, we don't know what the magnitude uh, of this force is, um, but we can, we can figure that out. We're starting to put together a, a system of equations here. So, uh, F2 is, well, it's coming out in the positive direction this way. We're going to multiply the um, magnitude of that vector times the cosine of 40 degrees now. And then the magnitude of that vector times the sine of 40 degrees. And we know that if we add these two together, it's got to equal this. And so if we added these two components together, they have to equal zero. Add these two components together, they have to equal 75. So we've got, um, we can write a system of equations here now. We've got uh, negative, uh, the magnitude of F1 
times the cosine of 55 degrees plus uh, this component here at 2 times the cosine of 40 degrees is that's got to equal zero and then these two components added together f1 times the sine of 55 degrees plus 2 times sine of 40 degrees that's got to equal 75. All right, we're running out of board here. Um, so the, to solve this system of equations now, we can uh, use substitution. This one would be uh, convenient here because we've got a negative here. We've got a zero over here. We can move this over to the other side, and we get that F2, the... the uh, magnitude of vector f2 is going to be equal to this, the magnitude of vector f1 times the cosine of 55 degrees. Is that still, yeah, a little bit? Um, over uh, the cosine of 40 degrees. So hopefully you followed my algebra there. Um, and, uh, and now we can take that F2 and we can substitute it in, in this other equation. So let me make some room here. And, uh, and let's go ahead and, and take all of this and plug it in for the uh, magnitude of F2. So we get magnitude of F1 times the sine of 55 degrees plus all of this, the magnitude of F1 times the cosine of 55 degrees divided by the cosine of 40 degrees. We've plugged that this in now for F, uh, the magnitude of F2. Now we've got to multiply by sine of 40 degrees. And that's going to be equal to 75. All right, now we can factor out an F1, or the uh, magnitude of F1, and factor this out, and we're going to be left with sine of 55 plus uh, cosine of 55. Notice that we've got a sine on top and a cosine, uh, both of 40. Sine divided by cosine is tangent. So this is going to be equal to 75 put 75 on the top and then divide by all of this. Uh, sine of 55 degrees plus cosine of 55 degrees times tangent of 40 degrees. And that looks ugly still, but it's at least something that we can just plug into a calculator. Um, if we do that, this is going to end up being approximately 57 Point six seven newtons. All right, so we're getting somewhere. Um, now, rather than go through all of this, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm just going to take that, which is an approximate value, but probably close enough that we can go ahead and just uh, plug that in for F1 in here and find that uh, the... Uh, the magnitude of F2 is going to be equal to this times the cosine of 55 divided by the cosine of 40. Um, and we'll, this is going to be approximate again, but it's going to be about 43.18 newtons. All right, so we've got our magnitudes. And um, now what, what were we asked for here? Um, we were asked to, uh, to actually find F1 and F2. So what we need to do from here um, is plug those into the equations that we had before. F1, vector F1 is equal to uh, this, or negative, uh, magnitude of F1 times the cosine of 55 degrees, 
and then the magnitude of F1 times the sine of 55 degrees. That's F1, and then F2 is going to be the magnitude of F2 times the cosine of 40 degrees and the magnitude of F2 times the cosine of uh, 40 degrees. The sine of 40 degrees, sorry. And now we know F1 and F2, we can plug those in. And if we, if we do that, we're going to get, and actually let me go ahead and just write that as 57.67 uh, 57.67. This is uh, 43.18, and this is 43.18. And if we plug those into the calculator, we're going to get that this is approximately negative 33.08, uh, 47.24. Yeah, okay, and then this is going to be approximately equal to. 33.08 and 27.76. And so those are going to be our final answers.